how much money do you make? So it was one of the most uncomfortable situations I've ever been in as a business owner. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sophie. If you are new here, I'm a graphic designer, self-employed, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2023 income report. This is the second year in a row that I have done this, but this time I'm giving an annual income report with my first year as a full-time small business owner. So the year before when I was doing this, this was in 2022, of course, and I was sharing numbers and information and stats about being a business owner while also having a full-time job alongside my business. This time though, this entire year has just been devoted to my small business. And I have to tell you, it did not disappoint. It completely changed the game for me being able to put full-time, legitimate, five days a week. Honestly, if I'm being truthful, I was working definitely more than five days a week, but to give my small business my full attention rather than splitting the time between my business and a full-time job, it completely shaped and changed what I was able to accomplish with my small business. So if you're ever curious about like real numbers, stats, and information behind small business owners, my hope is that today I can scratch that itch in your brain for you that maybe you've had for a little bit of time. When I was looking to go full-time with my business, I was very curious about other people's numbers. And I think that's just kind of like a natural curiosity. It's not like I would ever ask somebody like, hey, how much money do you make? But like on the inside, I'm like, how much money do you make? It's very natural to be curious about that. And I don't know, I definitely do talk about money, but it's one of those things that every time I go to post anything like this, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube, I'm always kind of like second guessing it or feeling a little unsure of myself because it just feels like so taboo but i also feel like it can be so beneficial to talk about it um like even in corporate i you know it's so like taboo to talk about what you make with your co-workers and i saw some posts before on instagram when i was working in corporate that were talking about yeah the reason why you don't do that is because employers don't want other employees to know what their co-workers are making because then if you find out that sally who has been at this company for a less amount of time than you are is making more money than you, then you're going to go to your employer and you're going to be pissed off and you're going to want more money. I don't know. I kind of feel like there's some freedom that comes within being able to talk about money, um, especially as young entrepreneurs, especially as young female entrepreneurs. I feel like when we are able to share stats and like real information. I'm not saying like we all need to go out together and be like, hey, how much money do you make? But just being able to be authentic about that, I feel like there is just empowerment that can come through that. So I'm going to be sharing with you just kind of an overview of my income, just kind of what happened in 2023. I've got some really fun, just like random quick stats and facts to share. Um, almost like a Spotify wrapped, but like a small business owner edition and information about my revenue streams as well. Uh, I talk a lot about creating multiple streams of income for yourself within my program for small business owners. It's called the Creative Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. Um, we are starting class in January. They're it, literally the cutoff time for um, enrollment is January 12th. So that's coming up really, really fast. Um, I'll leave a link down below if you're curious about it, but anyways, it's something that we talk about a lot. And so today I'm going to be breaking down what my income streams were and just kind of like how much I charge for stuff and what was responsible for what percentage of my income and just kind of where I landed, uh, by the time it was December 31st of 2023. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Before we get to some of the information just about how we did in a year, I wanted to share some quick stats for you. Um, HoneyBook is a platform that I use to keep track of all of my invoicing and contracts. It is a platform that has completely changed my life. Um, this is not sponsored in any way. Uh, I do have a discount like referral code that I will link below. I don't have that because I'm sponsored by them. I only have that just because any person that has a HoneyBook account has a referral link that they can share. So I just figured I might as well go ahead and share that with you guys. Before I started using HoneyBook, I was literally taking payments on like Venmo. 
and it was very unprofessional. It was not cute and it was not reflective of the level that my business was at. Like I used to do the whole, oh, Venmo me, DM me to order when I first started my business and I was in college. But now I'm 26 years old. I've been in business for five years and like it's just time to graduate from that. It's time to do something more professional and something that isn't just so like casual. So I looked to HoneyBook. I switched to that this year at the recommendation of my good friend, Katie, and it's changed the game. I love everything about HoneyBook. There's tons of features that you can use for automation. One of the most annoying things I had to do every single month with my bookkeeping was like remaking these invoices every single month and updating these invoices and like trying to track down money that I hadn't gotten from clients yet. So annoying. With HoneyBook, there is a magical feature called auto pay where you can require like if you have monthly clients for example like I do I require that they roll enroll into auto pay so that every month on like the 15th of the month for example when their payment is due it automatically withdraws it does ensure that if you have somebody that's like on a monthly relationship with you or you have a project where there's installments that are going to be paid, you can ensure that you are getting those without having to like chase them down and it sends out these automated reminders and you don't even have to touch it. And it's like, it's just one of the most beautiful things I have ever implemented into my business. So again, I will leave the referral link below to get a discount on HoneyBook. Such a great uh, CRM tool, bookkeeping tool, all of it. So some of these stats I actually got from HoneyBook. I didn't switch to that until around like June or July. So I don't have stats from like the whole year on a couple of these things, um, but I do on other things. So in the time that I had HoneyBook for like the last six months that I've had it, I brought in 37 new leads in the second half of the year alone. Honestly, I would imagine in total, it's probably been around like 60 or so, um, which would average uh, around like at least one per week, like more than more than one new lead a week. So that has been like a really steady, consistent flow of new leads, new inquiries that I did not always have in my business. I, especially in the early days, did not always have that. My ring light just went off. Does somebody know how to keep this thing on? I do not know how to keep this on. Every video, this happens to me. So 2023 was the first year that I really experienced a wow moment of, oh my goodness, my hard work is paying off. Of course, I have seen my hard work pay off ever since I first started, but in a really unique way, I saw my hard work pay off, not just in a monetary way, but in my reputation and in getting new leads to my business through like word of mouth. I talk about different ways to attract clients to your business. I dive deep into this in my Creative Entrepreneur Accelerator program. I also have a freebie that I will link below. That's all about five ways to attract clients to your business. It's a free blueprint uh, with five strategies plus a bonus one all strategies that I have used to bring in clients to my business at one point or another. You will use different strategies in different seasons of your business. Now, a lot of what I'm doing is literally word of mouth. I used to be like a cold pitching queen. And then when I recently met with my other business mentor, Sarah, she actually encouraged me to not cold pitch anymore. Um, I guess my ring light is just not gonna come back on. <laughs> um, maybe she needs to like cool down. I don't know, I'll try again and turn her back on in a minute. but. She actually encouraged me to not continue cold pitching right now at the stage and the level that I'm at in my business. So I was like, okay, I'd never thought about that before. Um, but what I've seen with this steady, consistent flow of leads is that I have not had to go out and do nearly as much business development as what I felt like I had to do in the past. So. What I saw in 2023 was that a lot of the leads that were coming my way, um, and I did still cold pitch people in 2023 for sure, but a lot of the leads that were coming my way were people that were already familiar with my work, um, and better yet, a lot of them were people that knew of somebody that worked with me or had seen my work with one of their uh, acquaintances or connections. Like They had seen my work somewhere. They were familiar with me, and that was really evident a lot in the past year and it was humbling every single time all of that was done not in my own might or my own strength but through the lord like any any good thing that's ever come to my business is not from my own might or my own strength that's from god um and it's from god giving me the ability to execute and to do things well uh which is why i feel such a strong responsibility to be a good steward of every opportunity that comes to me i'm not perfect but i try my best at everything that i do 
for the glory of God. And he just really showed up and blessed me in some crazy, immense ways in 2023. Like I had a moment where I just burst into tears uh, last month, like crying and laughing because I was just like, what is going on? Like I just, it was happy tears. I just was like, I just, sometimes the Lord does things and I'm just left speechless. And so I just am in awe of what he's done. And I say that to tell you that if you have a small business that you're working on, which I'd imagine if you're here right now watching this, you're probably watching this and you have a dream in your heart. And I just want you to know that you can trust God with that and he cares about that too. So of course, like if you're a praying person, continue to pray about the things that you pray about. But if you haven't invited God into this space of your life, I would encourage you to do that because my business did not change like for the better until I started inviting the Lord into this space really intentionally. Like once I really invited the Lord into my business, things shifted like overnight. Um, and if you're not new around here, you've heard me tell this story before. I won't get into the story today, but um, it was really crazy. So anyways, all that to say, I just really felt humbled and overjoyed this last year. Anytime anybody had complimented my work and told me that they had seen it before and just like new leads that would come through that I didn't myself seek out that they had heard about me or just sweet current clients that give others raving reviews about me that, you know, when you treat your clients well, like they're going to vouch for you out in public. And that has been one of the best ways that I've attracted clients to my business in 2023. So I am beyond, beyond thankful for that. And you don't have to be in business for five years to start getting word of mouth advertising for your business. It literally just starts with, with each and every client that you have, give them 110%, give them, give them the best experience that you can possibly give them. And that will start to happen. Now, I've definitely had moments where I've made mistakes with clients. I've definitely had moments where I have tried to give 110% and miss the mark. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Um, but then there's been clients that like, I know I I gave them a 10 out of 10. Like I know that. Um, and then when I haven't done that, I do try my best to make it right. Outside of word of mouth, I would say the majority of my leads also come through social media, Instagram specifically. And then also, like I said, I've done a lot of cold pitching, a lot of networking. But I would really like in the future and kind of like a 2024 goal that I didn't really get into in my goal setting process video that I uploaded recently is that I would really like for some of these leads to start coming from like Google search. I mean, I waited a long time, unfortunately, to invest in SEO research and keyword optimization for my business because it's like an intimidating subject and it's also intimidating to spend money on your business sometimes. Uh, but 2023, I invested a lot back into my business. It's kind of one of my hopes for 2024 is that I will see more leads coming from Google. Also in 2023, I let go of three clients. I have never like in the middle of a retainer relationship let go of a client i've definitely had clients that i've chosen to not work with once we finished a project but like in the middle of a retainer relationship never happened before there was one of them that if you've seen these previous day in life videos i was like lol i think i'm gonna get fired <laughs> it was a very unhealthy client relationship that I found myself in that I felt like I wasn't fully awake to until honestly the last couple months of 2023. But I gotta be real with you, it was one of the most uncomfortable situations I've ever been in as a business owner. I've never experienced anything like that before and this was not a good fit all around. Um, I definitely had a couple mistakes that I made on my end, but I did my best to own those. But outside of that, there was just a lot of toxicity that was coming from this client that I don't think they meant for that to be the case. But I was like, it is not good for me and my mental health to continue working with this person. Um, and so it had to come to an end. No amount of money is worth sacrificing your mental health. and. I learned that the hard way in 2023. Uh, and then the other two clients, I honestly love them dearly, but I just was like, I, I, don't, I don't have the bandwidth anymore to continue working with these clients. And there were some budget issues as well, um, and also just lack of time on my end. And so sometimes you have to narrow down your focus and 
that's what I've been trying to do is have a smaller list of clients where I'm more involved, more focused, like more ingrained in the day-to-day of their business rather than like a large amount of clients that I work with like here and there throughout the month. Okay, so let's talk about expenses and what it takes to run a business. I want to just tell you that anytime somebody says that they are a six-figure entrepreneur or a seven-figure business owner, which I have said this, that is part of this video today is to tell you that um, 2023 was the year that I made six figures in my business for the first time. It feels like a huge milestone to be able to say that, but I want to to also say that with a healthy dose of reality that just because you bring in six figures doesn't mean that six figures of profit that it's six figures of revenue so I feel like people know that but also at the same time I feel like people don't know that um, and there's no shame in either knowing that or not knowing that unless somebody specifies profit six figures is still six figures but I'm just telling you like I didn't pocket six figures I do keep the cost of doing business low I will say I do have the luxury of being able to pocket most of it because I don't have a huge amount of expenses every single month typically. Um, like my cost to produce the work that I produce, so much of it is online, so much of it is digital, so I don't have a bunch of cost of goods sold, if that makes sense. Um, like there were months this year, I in the especially in the beginning of 2023, where I only spent $200 on my business in a month. Um, but then there were other months where I spent $2,000 on my business. And uh, just being really open about that, it, it varies. In the second half of 2023, I was definitely spending more money on my business. And I will say, I try to aim to not spend more than like 20 to 30% of what my revenue was for the month on my business. Sweet spot I would say would be like maybe 20% of that revenue for the month is being invested back into my business in some way, but definitely no more than like 30%. And then outside of that, like anything else that I make goes into my checking account, into savings too. Some things that I spent money on in my business, I feel like people are always curious about like, okay, like what are you, what are you actually spending money on? I know when I was not full-time with my business, I was always like, do people spend money on this? Like, what do you spend money on? It's just one of those natural curiosities that you have. So I figured I would give you a breakdown of subscriptions that I pay for on like a monthly basis or an annual plan, as well as what the big investments were that I made into my business in 2023. You might've heard me talk about before, maybe your first year of business, focus on investing back into your business. Some people take the approach of they don't spend a dime their entire first year of business. And then some people take the approach where every dime that they make goes back into their business. And I feel like this is one of those things that you have to determine what feels right to you. But when I was first starting my business, I recognized that there were a lot of investments that I needed to make in order for me to have the tools that I needed to run my business. Sometimes those scary purchases where you're really investing in your business and your growth are the purchases that end up like changing the game. The things that I spent money on in terms of like subscriptions monthly or on an annual plan, just kind of the basic things that I need to run my business business are Libsyn, which is a podcasting host platform. I actually split that cost with my co-host Ashton. Um, and then same thing with Riverside. That's another platform that we utilize and that's what we actually record our podcasts on. If you didn't know, I do have a podcast. It's called The Art of Small and it is specifically for small business owners, current or aspiring. Uh, we love encouraging female entrepreneurs and that is what this podcast is all about. I also use Adobe and I will tell you a quick little tidbit of information about Adobe. I primarily use Adobe Illustrator. I was previously on a plan where I was paying like $35 a month just for Adobe Illustrator. Well, then I got a Photoshop subscription and it was like so expensive for what reason I don't know and I was like you know what I want to cancel this subscription and I called them I didn't cancel it online I called them and when I called to cancel it they actually offered me a deal on like all of the Adobe Creative Suite products but like for the price of less than what I was actually paying just for Adobe Illustrator alone. I was paying like $35 just for Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm paying like $30 for every single product in the Adobe Creative Suite. The other subscriptions that I pay for to run my business each month would be Zoom. Um, I also use, use the uh, Voxer app and that is kind of what I use to walkie talkie back and forth with my Creative Entrepreneur Accelerator students because we do office hours in between classes where we have like one-on-one -on -one 
one-on-one mentorship time so that's what i use to communicate with them i also use epidemic sound which is what i get any songs for youtube from and honeybook of course i've already talked about that so you already know i also pay for flowdesk and flowdesk is what i use to design all of my emails if you're interested in checking out flowdesk i've talked about it before but if you want to check it out or if you are wanting to get a flowdesk subscription do not pay full price for it because you do not have to. Every person that has a Flowdesk account has a referral link just like HoneyBook. So if you're interested in trying Flowdesk, you can try it for 50% off if you use my link below. Squarespace, of course, is another expense. So my website, I made it on Squarespace. And when I do custom website projects for clients, I make them on Squarespace. So I have to pay for my yearly domain renewal. And then I also have to pay for my annual Squarespace plan. I also pay for Envato Elements. It is an amazing platform and I primarily use that for finding fonts and mock-ups for brand design projects. The other thing that I pay for for my business is Notion which I have talked about Notion a lot. Um, I have a Notion tour that you can check out if you're curious about how I use it for my business but it's basically one big platform that I utilize to organize my business. And then the big expenses and investments that I made this year in my business were a podcast producer Again, this is a cost that I split with Ashton, my co-host, assistant. I hired somebody in September. Hiring her was truly such a game changer for my business. I'm so thankful that I did that. That's a pretty significant expense in my business now that I have somebody that is working with me. Um, she usually does about, I would say like 10 to 15 hours a week. First, it took some getting used to, to just have an expense like that, but I am so thankful to have her. Before I hired somebody, I had heard people talk about how much more profitable you can be with your business when you hire an assistant. And I have to say that every person that said that they were right. The next big investment that I made in my business this year was seeking legal counsel. So I have been working with an attorney, um, a lawyer to get all of my contracts updated. She's not representing me legally, but she is uh, educating me and rewriting all of my contracts for me. If I were to ever sue somebody, she would be referring me to a different attorney. Um, she lives in another state, so that's why we're doing it that way. But I want to make sure that my contracts are like ironclad. Like I want them to be really serious. Like there is no room for any BS from anybody. So I just decided I was like, this is an investment that I have to make. I have to make. And working directly with an attorney is expensive, but it is so worth it. And I'm really glad that I'm making this investment because I'm getting to set the rules and be really clear on what I'm okay with and what I'm not okay with. And then if somebody breaches that contract, it's enforceable and there can be consequences. When I work with somebody new, I want these contracts to send a message and I want the message to be received. And in the past, I've had contracts that I DIY just feel like when you are first starting out as a small business owner you just kind of pray that people won't take advantage of you because you don't know what you're doing or at least that's what my experience was as my business is growing I'm seeing more and more of a need to make sure that these contracts are super tight um, so that is why I sought legal counsel on that the other thing that I invested money into in 2023 that I'm going to continue investing money into in 2024 is business mentorship you might have heard me mention Sarah a couple times on YouTube or in my email list but she is a business mentor. I had a strategy call with her for 90 minutes and it was really, really valuable. And she helped me a lot with my content strategy moving forward too, which I'm really excited about. And the next thing that I spent a lot of time and money investing into my business on was SEO optimization and SEO keyword research. So Again, that is something that I really, really want to become another way to uh, attract clients to my business. I want it to be a big uh, focus in 2024. I want that to be a big lead source, a prominent lead source. I don't want all of my leads to be coming from Instagram because I don't want to feel reliant on social media for my business. Now to get to maybe some of the juicier stuff, maybe the reason why you clicked on this video, my 2023 income. Um, I'm not going to say the exact number, but I did make over six figures this year. Really excited about that. Really thankful for that. And I brought in 
over double what I was making at my corporate job. So when I first went full-time with my business, I was hoping to at least match my corporate salary, maybe go a little bit over. And then I ended up doing over double what my corporate salary was. That was completely unexpected. I did not see that in the cards uh, when I first went full-time with my business, but I'm beyond thankful for that. And again, that is all glory to God and not to myself because there were just so many moments this year where things came to me, thing, opportunities came my way that I was like, this could only be God. Uh, and just the way things worked out and the way some things just were orchestrated so perfectly, I was like, this could only be God. Um, so I just, I'm excited to share that accomplishment. Of course, I'm proud of myself, but I don't say any of that to bring any glory to me, if that makes sense. I just want to share it to be honest and also to celebrate. Like, I am very excited about that. Um, and also to share that this is coming from somebody that never thought I would ever see anything like that in my business. Like, even when I went full time, I didn't think I would ever see anything like that. Like, my, my, like, impossible to reach goal. I had a couple of goals. I had like a realistic goal. And then I had a goal that was like, okay, this would be like blowing it out of the water. And that was around like 75 K is what I was kind of like, okay, this would be over the top insane. Um, and I went way past that, way past that. So that was kind of crazy. To break it down for you, I'm kind of giving you like percentages of the revenue streams I have. So these are not exact, but they are an estimate. Around 60-ish percent uh, of my revenue came from retainer clients. So that is my monthly retainer clients that consistently work with me every single month. And what we're doing together is just like all of their marketing stuff. So email marketing, website maintenance, um, working on their brand. Around three-ish percent came from custom commissions, like just random one-off custom commission projects, custom portraits, um, partnerships with realtors, weddings, things like that. Um, but to be honest, uh, custom commissions are not things that I spend a ton of time on. Like I started to turn down all of those projects the second half of 2023 because I was like, I just don't have time. They're not the big fish in the business. And so I just got to a point where I was like, I have to prioritize frying my bigger fish. <laughs> um, and so that is why I unfortunately had to say no to a lot of custom projects. And then around 3% came from a single day literally a single day at the peony festival um the sales that i made at the peony festival it's an, a festival for our state flower in indiana and it is crazy that i mean there were thirty thousand people there we had a steady flow of traffic from like 8 a.m before way before it even starts we had a steady flow of traffic from like 8 to 9 a.m until four o'clock in the afternoon so it is a lot there is a lot of commerce happening in a single day. About 10% of my revenue also came from brand design clients. And then another 10% came from custom website design clients. And then another 10% came from sales for my CEA course. And then the platforms that I use the most to create this year would be Procreate, Adobe Illustrator, Flowdesk for all my emails, and Canva. I use Canva. I use it for a lot of things. I know a lot of graphic designers are against Canva, but like sometimes you need to use Canva so you can create templates for clients. Sometimes I just want to do like a quick like graphic for an Instagram story or what have you. So I'm a Canva fan. So key takeaways as we wrap up. When I first started doing retainer client work, all my clients were paying me like in the hundreds. Um, and some of my biggest clients were paying me like $700 and that felt huge. But then as time went on, it started to feel not huge and it started to feel like, oh my gosh, my niche, the people that I like to work with are small business owners. But I know from experience that when you're a small business owner, you just don't always have like the biggest budget on earth to spend on marketing. I started to feel discouraged of like, am I ever gonna be able to find clients that are willing to invest a thousand dollars a month and upwards? Like, am I ever gonna be able to break into like the four figures a month from clients rather than just like 
three, um, which I, I don't think that, you know, having a client pay you 500 to $800 a month is nothing to scoff at. Um, but it just was kind of like a level that I started with, um, and was building on and like, you know, starting to get into more of that, like 700 to $800 range. And that felt big to me, but it just did get to a point where I was like, okay, this is making me feel like I have to take on all these clients. And, um, it just wasn't really working for me anymore. And I just felt like, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to find clients that are willing to pay in the thousands range. Give it time if you feel this way, because really I think what happened was a time B investing in my relationship with clients so that they really trust me. C asking for what I'm worth, like just asking for it. Like I'm saying like, Hey, I'm, I'm changing my rates or Hey, I need this amount of time with you to get what you're asking to get done. Like we need to increase our retainer hours together. So like just asking for it made a huge difference in taking me from working with clients that were paying like 500 something a month to working with clients that were paying me like a thousand dollars or more a month. I also had a conversation with a client recently in this last year that completely changed my perspective. And it was when she asked me like, how many hours do you think that we need to get all this stuff done? And I told her, and I was like kind of afraid to tell her how many hours I felt like we needed because I just felt like it was gonna be too much. And so I literally said it to her with this look on my face where I was like, I think it's probably gonna take like X amount of hours. And I, and I mean, I looked like a scared deer in headlights and she was like, that's fine. And she just had no, I mean, she didn't even bat an eyelash about it. And of course, like every client's gonna have a different budget. And I do my best to work with anybody's budget because I'm like, look, there is no shame in whatever budget that you have to work with, with your business. I mean, I understand that. So I do try to work with budgets when I can, but there's also just like, I do have to think about myself. I do have to think about like what amount I'm willing to agree to and what amount I'm not. But it was just like mind blowing to me that like I said what I think we would need and what the cost would be. And she was like, yeah, okay, let, let's do it. And didn't fight me on it and didn't try to negotiate or anything. She just accepted it. And what she said to me was that she saw the value in what she was investing in. And she said, I want to invest in working with you and I want to invest in this marketing for my business. And I don't know, it's something so simple, but it's such a shift in perspective that when she said that, I was like, you're right. Like that, that makes sense. And, and I appreciate that. And I received that because it is an investment and working with me is an investment. Your clients that are working with you are investing and they're not just investing in you, but they're investing in themselves too. Like this isn't just about me. I mean, it, it's about them. It's about the investment that they are making in their business, um, which is why it's so important that as service providers, when people trust you and invest in you, follow through. Like I can't get over the amount of horror stories I heard this year from clients that came to me after being burned by another service provider. I'm like, I can't believe that people are sleeping at night with the poor quality product that they're giving to people that are investing in them. So don't be one of those people, like be one of those service providers that goes above and beyond. I just wanted to close with that to share. There are things that are happening in my business right now that I either A, thought would take 10 years to get to, or B, didn't know that I would ever get there. And whatever stage you're at, whether you can relate to this specifically or not, I just want to tell you that that applies to you too, regardless of like, maybe you're in year one of your business, I'm in year five. That still applies to you. There are things that you're doing with your business right now. There are goals that you have that feel impossible that like one day are not going to be impossible. They're not going to feel far away. They're going to be like, boom, check that off. Like I did that. It's a really wild feeling when you get to that point. There's still tons of goals that I have that are unrealized dreams. Some of them might happen and some of them may not. And that's okay. Small business ownership is a journey and it is worth it hundred percent of the time. I don't think you're ever wasting your time when you're working on something that you love. Thank you guys so much for being here for another video. I really appreciate y'all. I have been hearing from more people recently on my YouTube channel, which really just makes me so happy because I felt like for a long time I was like, is anybody out there? <laughs> I still have a very teeny tiny little corner of the internet over here, but I've been hearing from more people and like connecting with more people on here. That really brings me a lot of joy. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video, please feel free to comment down below and I will get back to you and I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.